Mr. President, President. I could. Mr. President. Uh, Steve, please. You, you mentioned the possibility of adjourn adjourning both the chambers of Congress. Could you explain what you meant by this? Or? Very simple. If they don't act on getting these people approved that we need because of the — we need them anyway. But we especially need now, because of the pandemic, uh, we are going to do something that will be uh, something I'd prefer not doing, but which I should do and I will do if I have to. Caitlin, go ahead. One, on a call with business leaders today, they said testing has got to be ramped up significantly before the country, before they feel comfortable reopening their stores, their restaurants sure. and whatnot. Isn't that what health officials and state governors have been It's what I want to. We have great tests, and we want the states to administer these tests for the most part. But we're standing behind them. We have great tests. We've done more testing now than any country, as you know, in the world by far. We have the best tests of any country in the world. Nobody have, has the quality of tests. The uh, if you look at Abbott, what they've come up with in a short period of time, they've been incredible. Roach has been incredible. We have the best tests in the world, and we will be working very much with the governors of the states. Uh, we want them to do it. We're not going to be running a parking lot in Arkansas. We're not going to be running a parking lot where you have a Walmart, which has been great, by the way. Walmart has done a fantastic job, but where you have a testing center and running that from Washington, D.C. The states are much better equipped to do it. But uh, we'll be working with the states. We're standing behind the states. We're going to work very closely with the governors in terms of that, uh, getting additional equipment. Uh, it used to be three, four weeks ago, two weeks ago, uh, could we get more ventilators? More ventilators, right? And we got them ventilators, and you don't hear that anymore. It's been pretty amazing what we've been able to do. Yeah, go ahead, John. Well, I think the companies will determine that, and the governors will determine that, and the federal government will do And if we're not happy, we'll take very strong action against a state or a governor. If we're not happy with the job a governor's doing, we'll let them know about it. And as you know, we have very strong action we can take, including a close down. But we don't want to do that. We're working with the governors, and we're working closely with the governors. The relationship has been very good. Uh, Vice President has had a lot of conversations over the last two weeks with either 50 or almost 50 governors on every conversation, and they've been uh, really positive conversations. Uh, we have the right to do whatever we want, but we wouldn't do that. But no, we would have the right to close down what they're doing if we want to do that. But we don't want to do that, and I don't think there'll be any reason to do that, but we have the right to do that. Steve, go ahead. Go ahead. You got me already. Mr. President, why did you have your name added to these coronavirus relief checks? Well, I don't know too much about it, but I understand my name is there. Uh, I don't know where they're going, how they're going. I do understand it's not delaying anything, and I'm satisfied with that. I don't, I don't imagine it's a big deal. I'm sure people will be very happy to get a big, fat, beautiful check, and my name is on it. Yeah, go ahead, please. President. Mr. President, President, go ahead, please. President please. Why, why please. You... Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. Dr. Burks just said that Rhode Island is seeing an increase in cases from people that are coming from Boston and New York. You just said you'd like to reopen some states before May 1. How will you stop a second spike in cases if people are traveling between states? How will you control the flow of people? Well, the governors can control that flow, as an example. In fact, I just saw a little while ago it was reported that certain borders are being controlled already by states. They're starting to take control of their borders, which is good. So they'll be controlling. They may do testing for people wanting to come in. I'd read that about uh, Rhode Island, so they have to watch it. They have to be very careful. Yeah, please, Thank in the you, back. Thank you, Mr. President, uh, about reopening the country again. You said, along with other nations, what form would it take? Are you considering also uh, relaxing uh, the border between Canada and the U.S.? So. Our relationship with Canada is very good. Uh, we'll talk about that. It will be one of the early borders to be released. Canada is doing well. We're doing well. We'll see. But at some point, we'll be doing that. In the meantime, nations that are heavily infected, we have a lot of nations that are heavily infected. Some are getting better. Some are still on the way up, unfortunately. Uh, we're keeping very strong borders with those nations. But with Canada, we are talking about different things. Yeah, please. Mr. President, you said uh, that the evidence suggests that nationwide we have passed the peak on new cases. What's your evidence for that? What are the numbers? Well, saying? all we're doing is looking at the numbers. We're looking at our graphs. We're looking at our models. We're getting a great response from Deborah and from Tony and from many of the professionals that are working. We have great professionals working with us. And I think based on that, we're 
we're doing very well. Based on that, it looks like we're headed absolutely in the right direction. But some states are looking at other states and they're saying, I can't imagine what they're going through because they're not in that position. They're in very good shape. I would say that we have 20 states at least, but you really have 29 that are in extremely good shape. You have others that are getting much better. And I think with almost a few exceptions, you have every state that is either doing better or on the way to doing better. Yeah, please. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. On, on your threat to adjourn or sorry, adjourn Congress, clearly you have the power, Article 2, Section 3, but that'd be quite radical to do. Earlier last month, you were in the Oval Office talked about now is not the time for partisanship. How will that act lower the partisanship in this town, and could it potentially hinder your ability to get something done on coronavirus? Well, and it, it is. It's, look, it's been a very partisan government for a long period of time, not just this administration. You can go back into the last two administrations. You've seen a lot of partisanship. And even now, you would think that we wouldn't have, as an example, with the paycheck plan. That's going so well. It's so smooth, so beautiful, almost without a hitch. All of that money is being distributed to small businesses. They're giving it to their employees. It's keeping them ready, viable, so when we open. And now it's been so good that it's almost depleted, and we want to replenish it, and we can't get the Democrats to approve it. And that's a program that they and everybody else admit that are great. So you do have partisanship. We have been trying for years to get people approved for positions. People have left. One man left a law firm. One man left uh, a, a big chain. He, it was a very successful executive. He left. It was two years ago. We have people that have been waiting for three years, and we can't get them approved by the Democrats in the Senate because they're taking so long to approve our judges. Now, I have to tell you that I'm totally in favor of what Mitch is doing with judges, because that's always seems to be a priority, and it's a very important priority. I think it's one of the great trademarks of this administration. We've approved record numbers of federal judges and appellate judges and two Supreme Court judges. But rather than approving somebody who's highly qualified, somebody that everybody knows is going to be approved, rather than going quickly, they take the maximum amount of time, whatever that time may be. And what they're doing by doing that is taking days to approve somebody that could be approved in a quick vote. People that get phenomenal reviews in committee are going maximum number of hours. And what they do is there's only so many hours in a day. Now, we could have said, let's stay. I would have been in favor of that. They didn't choose to do it. Uh, but I have a very strong power. I'd rather not use that power. But we have way over 100 people that we very badly need in this administration that should have been approved a long time ago. And one of them is the head of Voice of America. If you look at what they're doing, and what they're saying about our country, it's a disgrace, the people that are running that. We have somebody that's really good, really talented, and that loves our country. And I want to get these people approved. That's one of many. We have professionals. Uh, Sonny, you've been waiting for how long have you been waiting for the man that we're talking about coming in? Uh, two and a half years. So Sonny Perdue just happens to be here talking about something else. So you've been waiting for one of the most important positions as Secretary of Agriculture is the position. It's distribution. We need it now. We're talking about shelves. We're talking about cupboards. He needs it. He's been waiting. He didn't know he was going to get this question. You've been waiting two and a half years. The person is exceptional. That person left a very good job. And uh, it's embarrassing to me. He'll say, do you think you'll get that man approved? He's been saying that to me for a long time. It's because of the Democrats. And what we're doing is, and I think anybody here would do it, judges are a priority. A federal judge who's going to sit for 50 years, potentially, a young judge going to be sitting for, that's always going to have to be a priority. But because they're taking so much time and approving every, they're trying to put us through the mill. That's when you talk about partisanship, and it's never, ever happened before. You can look at every administration in the history of this country, nobody 
Nobody has ever had hundreds of people not approved after three and a half years. Go ahead, please. The timeline for that, though. If, if Congress doesn't act we'll by when, soon. do Look, you have a They date? know. I, they've been warned, and they're being warned right now. If they don't approve it, then we're going to go this route. And we'll probably be challenged in court, and we'll see who wins. But when the court hears that we aren't getting people approved, as Sonny would say, for two and a half years for an important position that we need because of this crisis. We needed these people before, but now we really need these people. President, 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 President. About, back to the numbers for a second. When you talk about the numbers, the jobless claims are going to come out tomorrow. It's likely around 5 million more Americans uh, putting their names in for unemployment benefits, but yet there are still a couple thousand people as well dying a day because of coronavirus. When you talk about opening up the American economy, or at least in parts now, how do you balance that decision out, given both of those figures? Well, we are. There has to be a balance. You know, there's also death involved in keeping it close. And I've gone over this with you, and I believe this so strongly. When you look at mental health, when you look at suicides, suicide hotlines, who are, which are exploding, people losing their jobs, when you look at drugs and people that didn't take drugs and now they're becoming drug addicted because they're going through a problem, they have no job, they have no money coming in, other than the money we're getting them. We've opened up the coffers to a large extent. We're helping people. This is why I wish the Democrats would help us a little bit with it, because they should. It's purely partisan what they're doing, and it's bad for our country. But, but you know, there is death by doing by having this strongly closed country. We have to get back to work. With all of that being said, we're going to start with states and with governors that have done a great job, and they're going to open it up as they see fit, and we're going to be right behind them, and we're going to be working. We're going to be supplying them with things if they don't have them. We want them to have them. We're going to be helping them with ventilators after this is over so that they can't say, oh, the federal government. We want them to have — they've had a lot of options. Many of the governors have had a lot of options over the years to buy ventilators. They didn't choose to do it. So we're going to be helping them to fill up their stockpiles. We're going to have plenty. And as I said, I'm very proud to do it. We're going to be helping other nations. We're going to be helping Italy, Spain, France, other nations. And we're going to be helping them strongly. I think Russia is going to need ventilators. They're having a hard time in Moscow. We're going to help them. We're going to help other countries that need ventilators. We're going to have a lot. You see it with General Motors. You see it with other companies that are producing. We're going to have hundreds of thousands of ventilators, and it's a great thing to have. Yes, in the back, please. Is anybody freezing? You know, it's very cold out here. So we can leave early, right? Okay, a couple of more. Go ahead, please. Well, you don't know what you have. Do you think you're getting honest numbers from some of these countries? Do you really believe those numbers in this vast country called China and that they have a certain number of cases and a certain number of that? Does anybody really believe that? Here's the story. We report everything. We're reporting the cases, and our reporting is good. We're reporting every death. In fact, I see this morning where New York added 3,000 deaths because they died, and they're now saying, rather than it was a heart attack, they're saying it was a heart attack caused by this, so they're adding. Uh, if you look at it, that's it. And everything we have is documented, reported. And what they are doing is, just in case, they're calling it this, and that's okay, that's okay. But we are, we have more cases because we do more reporting. We have more cases because everything is down. But does anybody really believe the numbers of some of these countries that you've been watching and you've been reporting on, and then it's like they didn't have the big thing? There have been some really, really bad, heavily and in, in really some countries that are in big, big trouble, and they're not reporting the facts. And that's up to them. All I know is we report the facts, and we're a country that's getting better. John, go ahead. President. Mr. Mr. President, uh, multiple sources are telling Fox News today that the United States government now has high confidence that while the coronavirus is a naturally occurring virus, it emanated from a virology lab in Wuhan, that because of lax safety protocols, an intern was infected who later infected her boyfriend and then went to the wet market in Wuhan where it began to spread. Does that correspond with what you have heard from well, officials? Well, I don't want to say that, John, but I will tell you uh, more and more we're hearing the story. 
And we'll see when you say multiple sources. Now, there's a case where you can use the word sources, but uh, we are doing a very thorough examination of this horrible situation that happened. Go ahead, please. In your many conversations with President Xi, Mr. President, did you ever discuss with him State Department concerns about lax safety protocols that had been reported to the State Department from the embassy in Beijing about that laboratory? I don't want to discuss what I talked to him about the laboratory. I, I just don't want to discuss it. It's inappropriate right now. Please go ahead in the back. Uh, Tim Alvia from Channel 9 Australia. Uh, there have been calls in our country for uh, Prime Minister Scott Morrison to make funding for WHO conditional on reforms to the organization. I wanted to get your thoughts on that and if you had any advice for Mr. Morrison. Look, I feel very badly about the World Health Organization, but it's been a tool of China. It's been, as I say, totally China-centric. You take a look at everything that's happened, they've been wrong. I was all for it at the beginning. What do I know? I walked in, I said, World Health Organization, isn't that wonderful? And then you start to see all the mistakes. They didn't want us to close our borders to China, to Wuhan, specifically. They didn't want our borders closed. You take a look, Mike was there, we're all there, and they're criticizing me for closing the border. I did that very early. By the way, I did that very early while Nancy Pelosi was trying to have in San Francisco parties in Chinatown because they, she thought it would be great. She wanted to show that this thing doesn't exist. These are people, I'll tell you, we have some politicians on the other side that don't know what they're doing. If you look at, if you look at timelines, you gotta look at some timelines. But the world, the World Health Organization, just like the World Trade Organization, I'm telling you, I call them, they have been treating the United States for decades so badly, and they've been so in favor of China. China took off when it joined the World Trade Organization because of what's happened. Think of it. They're considered a developing nation, and because they're a — and we're not. But well, we're a developing nation, too, in my book, okay? We're developing, too. But the fact is, we have been treated so badly by these organizations, and believe me, I'm looking at that one, too. We're winning a lot of lawsuits right now that we never won before in the past. We're winning a lot of money that we never won in the past. That's with the world trade. But with the World Health Organization, uh, what's happened there is a disgrace. Here's the other thing. We pay 400 to $500 million a year. China's paying 38, 39, and $40 million a year. And it's like they control this group. I could do that too if I want to devote full time to it or have some very capable people dealing with Dr. Tedros, okay? I could do it too. I could do very well with that. But there's something going on. There's something going on that's very bad. Now, the 500 million that we save will determine. We're going to make a determination over a little period of time. But they're going to either have to make massive changes. I don't even know if they're going to be able to do that. Or we're going to give money to people. We want to help people. You know, what we do in Africa with AIDS, people have no idea what we do and the money we spent. We were talking about it the other day, doctor. We are spending billions of dollars to help people. In the case of uh, one that Dr. Birx is very much involved in, AIDS, billions of dollars. And you know what? It's a great thing. Nobody talks about it. Nobody gives us credit. We do that, and we do it very directly. But we're spending billions of dollars to help people live and all over the world. But we're spending $500 million to the World Health Organization and there's something very bad going on. And you know what? I've gotten very much involved. It's been going on for a long period of time. And we don't want to be the suckers anymore. So it's cold out. We will talk to you tomorrow. Big day tomorrow. Very big day. Thank you. President, if Dr. Tedros is removed, would you change your mind? All right, folks, thank you so much for joining us and choosing us as your stream of choice. This was an amazing, amazing press briefing. Uh, the one tomorrow is going to be even better. It seems like it gets better every single day now. It's it's really, really, uh, really amazing to see. So if you enjoyed our coverage, make sure that you subscribe and you click that notification bell once again. Make sure you click that that subscribe button and the notification bell if you want to tune in tomorrow 
and get the notification for tomorrow's press briefing. If you missed the first part of the briefing, it's already uploaded onto the channel. If you missed the second part, it should be uploaded very soon. Thank you so much for choosing gold and stay times as your stream of choice. If you want to get notifications through text message, if you want to get notified by us instead of YouTube, then send us a text message with the word Trump Live to the number 555-888 and we will notify you here at Golden State Times every single time that we go live for a press briefing or a Trump speech instead of YouTube because not they haven't been sending uh, everyone a notification. So if you want to get notified directly by us instead of YouTube, send a text with the word Trump Live. L-I-V-E, Trump Live, all together to the number 555-888. And we hope that you guys join our notification list. Also, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Gold State Times to stay up to the second informed of what is going on in politics, breaking news, and everything else in between.